Steve Jenkins doing his thing. Check this out. So that was Steve Jenkins doing his thing. This is, like I've been working all day on this. It's driving me nuts. I should have been working properly today. Um, but I've been trying to get this slappy thing down, whatever Steve's doing. And uh, I'm going through a lot of pain trying to do this because I just can't do it. Not physical pain, but mental pain, like torturing myself, like oh, why can't I do it? So I figured it'd be cool to, uh, to get you guys to try and do it with me. So what I'm gonna do is guys, if you're an Academy member, you'll have already seen this lesson because this is directly from the membership at scottsbasslessons.com. But if you aren't, you're gonna dig this and, or, or maybe not because it's going to drive you insane over the next few days trying to do what Steve's doing in this video. Either way, it's a ton of fun and hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, anyway, I'll let Steve take it away from now. If you enjoy the video, check out scottsbasslessons.com because not only is the full course of this in there, um, but we've got like 25 other courses in there from from me and, and some of the top uh, base educators in the world. Anyway, I'll let Steve take it over. Take it away, Steve. Now I want to talk about something that I've been experimenting with for the past few years. There was a point in the 90s where slap bass was a huge thing and then the inevitable backlash happened and all of a sudden everyone who slapped was sort of like persona non grata. Like it just wasn't something that, uh, I don't know, it got frowned upon. Even though I contend that some of my favorite bass playing is by people like Larry Graham and Prince and um, Marcus Miller. But what ended up happening was I had all these slap techniques that I didn't really, you know, I wasn't going to use them, but I wanted to figure out a new way to maybe utilize them with music. So um, what, I, what I found is that I could do a lot of the same techniques like just by playing back towards the bridge pickup. And even some of the things where I'm going back and forth with my thumb. And get like weird groupings like groups of seven, groups of five, groups of six, threes and fours. And what ended up happening was I found a way to play some grooves, which are not, these are not necessarily things that I can use all the time or even probably half the time, but I did find some interesting ways to work on like uh, different thumb techniques, which came from like slapping and things that were sort of once a really big deal. And I don't know, who knows, maybe it'll come back. But anyway, first, let me give you an example of what I mean and I'll break it down. I'll show you what I'm doing. So here's, here's like, we'll call this groove number one. So this is just essentially an exercise to get used to how it works. Essentially this, I mean, it sounds almost like something someone would program in a sequencer and it, it gets repetitive and annoying after a time, but just to kind of see like, basically here's the meat of the groove. This is like the, the essence of it. So that's essentially what it is. Now when I add the extra stuff, So what's happening is I've broken down the accents or I've broken down each note into uh, so here we have three. So like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. 
So essentially the main part of the groove is just And what I learned how to do is I basically figured out what groupings work around where those notes lie. So it's basically groups of threes and, and twos. So it's like one, two, three, one. So here very slowly, hard to talk through this and play at the same time. I'm going to try. So it's two groups of threes, a group of four, and then two groups of threes. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three. So one two three one two three one two three four one two three 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 four one two three. And then the other thing is I got into using like the, I guess what you would call double thumbing, but somehow I figured out a way to like fives one two three four five one two three four. But anyway, what I did was I started with that really simple groove. And it works when you're doing um, muted style thumb grooves. You can totally use these types of things. So one thing that's cool about this technique is that it is very compatible with playing with muted grooves. So here's how I play that break uh, on that one piece with Kenny. Uh, So essentially it's just like a slap technique, but I'm just, so. It just works the same way. I'm just not, I'm not doing it up here. Um, it just kind of lends itself to it's cool because it's not as loud as slapping, but it's got the percussive parts that people like. It's not really something that I use so often, but just, just to explain what was happening there, essentially it's just me going through the chords. But I'm not playing like the full sus, I'm not playing G sus or A sus, I'm just... So it's a lot of hammering and like with the left hand and then just using groups of two and three with the right. Um, best thing I can do is just kind of show you slowly how, how it's, how it works. Slow. Even slower. Tempo. The topics I'm covering in this course 
are basically half groove concepts and half concepts that are based around unorthodox techniques for bass that I've adapted from other instruments. And some of the things that I talk about have to do with very traditional roles of, that the bass has had in music and some of the things we get into here are more unorthodox. Some common mistakes that I see with students when I'm teaching these particular concepts Right off the bat, I would say the main one would have to do with a fear of not sounding good right away, because generally these are things that are going to require some musical risk taking and being willing to forgo the comfort zone. Like go into this and don't be scared to try and it, you know, it may sound not so great at first, but that shouldn't be a detriment. It should be fuel to want to keep working on it. So that's the big thing, be brave. The kind of students that would benefit from this course are people who are into experimenting and maybe trying some different things while still having an interest in doing conventional bass things like playing grooves. Hey, this is Steve Jenkins, and if you want to take your bass playing to the next level, this course is for you.